Welcome to the Dome Dog Podcast. I'm your host, Matt DeBritz. Now, first time listening to me, I've been in the media for close to 25 years. Uh, most of it was spent at ESPN. Now I'm on my own. Grew up in Syracuse. Watched the team from the late 80s, the 87 championship run to Los Indiana, all the way up to now. So I know a lot about Syracuse basketball, I think. Anyways, so things are crazy right now in college basketball in the Syracuse world with the transfer portal and the Final Four. Um, NIT was last night. Seton Hall topped Indiana State 79-77, and Kadari Richmond, Syracuse transfer, dropped 21 points. They were slighted probably for the NCAA tournament, but they won there. So uh, transfer portal, Syracuse has five guys in the portal. Benny Williams, no surprise. He was kicked off the team. Peter Carey, uh, center, didn't really play that much. Justin Taylor um, just was playing opposition, didn't really shoot well this year, maybe looking for a fresh start. Kadir Copeland, you know, second in the running for six man in the ACC and really an electric guy and fun guy to watch. Going to miss him not being there. And Malik Brown, another glue guy who just did his job all the time. You know, I don't have any inside information on why these guys are leaving unless they tell the, uh, anyone publicly. We don't know. But uh, I do have a funny story about Malik Brown because I live in Virginia and he's from Culpeper. I ran into a guy who claimed to be his uncle. Uh, he had a Syracuse jersey on and started chatting him up. And he said, Malik really wants to go to the NBA. I didn't catch his name. I didn't ask his name. I don't know if he's a distant co- uh, cousin or not. I don't know what he what he knows or what he doesn't know. But, you know, Syracuse.com had an article not too long ago saying Malik Brown was definitely coming back. So something had changed. The only thing I can think of by putting two and two together is that maybe he thinks he's playing in a different position or needs to play more of a three position where he could shoot threes. Kind of similar to Quincy Gurrier a few years ago where Quincy – he was a starter at Syracuse and played well and almost was a double-double guy. And then he decided to go to Oregon and became a jump shooter in Illinois. And he never really had the same numbers. You know, I hope that's not the same thing from Malik Brown, but who knows? I don't know that any reason and specifically why these guys were leaving, you know, and then Benny Williams just kicked out the team, but they're not going to be here anymore. And that's just the way of the world. Transfer portal is alive and well. Um, the final four teams, just look at them. NC State, their whole team is transfers. You know, Burns, you know, DJ Horn, their main guys, they're transfers. Um, Alabama, four or five or five or six of their top scorers are, are transfers. Purdue, not so much, only, only one guy, but he's one of their top scorers as well. You kind of transfer. It's just how it goes. Guys that are leading their conference in scoring or starters or players of the year, they're transferring because coaches are also leaving. They're leaving after one year. It's just how things are. Things are crazy. Coaches are playing or having good records and people want them out. It's just insanity and in, in how it is. If you're going to watch college basketball, I'll be a part of it. You're just going to have to, to live with it. And Syracuse is no different. So what do they do? They grab uh, Eddie Lapkin Jr. from Colorado. He also played at TCU, six foot 10, six foot 11, around 300 pounds. Um, he averaged 10.6 points per game last year, seven rebounds. He's not a shot blocker, only 34 shot blocks, or block, block shots in his career. Maybe that will compliment Naheem McLeod and Patterson. Um, the kid that never played last year was a red shirt. So we'll see what Syracuse is a three-prong approach for for center or where they go small at points because they also have Donnie Freeman, who's six foot 10, uh, but he plays more as a Kevin Durant type or Brandon Ingram type. He was McDonald's all American. He had a decent game. I'll post some of the highlights in the show notes. And then Elijah Moore is a shooting guard coming in six foot four. We don't know about Judah Mintz. There was a report yesterday from Mike Waters, Syracuse.com that he's not coming back. And then Mintz kind of wrote under it. Hey, I, uh, you know, don't let Mike Waters run the program. You know, in other words, I'll make my own announcement. I'll make I'll make my own um, decisions, and you're not going to tell anybody. Well, at this point, it's been three weeks. You know, either you're going to go for the draft thing like you did last year and take your chances, you're going to go pro, or you're going to leave. And you know, everyone can take their time and make their decision on their own time. But I'd be shocked if Unimins comes back. I just think that he thinks he's ready for the pros. He needs to improve his outside shot, I think. But you know, he's he's got pro potential. Whether it's you know, in, in an overseas environment, G League environment, or uh, NBA, you know, some guys just play better in the NBA or do better in the trials. So we'll see what happens with him and see if anything else happens in the Syracuse transfer portal. But the other thing I want to talk about is is Jim Beheim kind of calling into radio shows and, and getting upset and kind of how we got to this point. And um, last week, Jim Beheim was on a show and, it, you know, it was it was planned. Obviously, he talked about the Final Four. He talked about Joe Girard leaving and how he had a good season. It was a good move for him. And for some reason, Mike Hopkins came up and he said kind of like, oh, 
you know, I, I, I didn't know Mike Hopkins was going to leave because they were talking about Jerry McNamara. McNamara, if you haven't heard, has gone to Siena. He's going to be the head coach there. So that's a loss for Syracuse. Um, and then this week on Q Sports Talk Radio, some other caller called in and said something to the effect of, I don't believe Jim Beheim. I think he, you know, he, I don't buy that story about Mike Hopkins. And I don't want to speak for all fans because I don't know every single fan of Syracuse, but, you know, the guys that call in the radio shows and also people that are message boards and, you know, judging by some of the attendance, some of the games, you know, people are not as happy with or not as intrigued to go to Syracuse games. And there's a few different reasons for that. And I want to go back to the whole shift from the Big East to the AC, uh, Big East to the ACC. And, you know, fans, they're not required to understand financials and, and money and, and things like that. And school administrators and people who are being counters are, you know, they, they, they want to make money for the school and, the move for the ACC is financial. You know, the Big East had a lot of teams and and that weren't football teams. And football generates a lot of money. Basketball doesn't generate as much money. But fans don't care about that. They want to watch the good basketball, right? So, okay. So, you know, that gave people a knee-jerk reaction. That's just my observation from talking to people that I know. I'm not ever talking about every single fan, but a lot of fans. And then Syracuse starts off 25-0 and in, the, in that season, that they, their inaugural season in the ACC. They beat Duke, which was a huge game on campus. College game day was there. Syracuse is ranked number one. They look well on their way to being a number one seed again. And, and you know, who knows what's going to happen. But then the wheels kind of came off. They lost to Boston College. And they finished the season three and six, losing the first round of the ACC tournament at NC State. And then they lost to, to Dayton in the second round, which was just a big-time bummer. And then after that, um, Syracuse – in 2014-15, goes self-imposes and, and not in the postseason. And following that, Mike Hopkins then is named the the the, the coach in waiting, pretty much. And after the 2017-18 season, so he's going to succeed, succeed Jim Bayon, which is weird. A, a three-year plan to succeed somebody, I get it. But why was it public? It could have just been quiet and no one could have said anything. I know maybe for recruits or in, 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 you know saving face, or whatever, because the program was under fire at that point. So then also Jim Beheim the next season had to serve a nine game suspension and Hopkins took over as coach. He went four and five. People were like, Oh, is he the coach that's really going to be here? Is he going to change things? You know, Beheim came out and said that that situation wasn't fair to, to judge him on. And then what had happened 2016 Syracuse was a bubble team, but they make the NCAA tournament, but they go to the final four and people are like, Oh, I can't believe they went with this team. Well, they had a lot of talent on the team. They just underachieved during the regular season. And, and kind of Beheim took a, a different attitude of the, the postseason is what matters. And for him, it does matter. You know, the postseason is what he's judged on, postseason. Fans, though, of Syracuse that like to go to the game at the Dome, you know, the regular season mattered too. And in the Big East, games mattered. The, the Big East tournament mattered. But for in the ACC, without a true rival, um, yeah, Syracuse beat Duke that first year. But since then, they haven't beaten them that much. Same with North Carolina. They beat North Carolina this season, but overall, Duke, North Carolina, and Virginia have owned those, have owned Syracuse. So there's no rivalry with those top-tier teams. They can't compete with them, obviously, at, at points. And then the second-tier teams, they're just not as much fun to have a rival a rivalry with, right? So it matters to the fans to that sense. That's why I think that guy who called in was saying, I don't buy that. That's BS. You know, like, you, you, you got Mike Hopkins out of here. Was Mike Hopkins supposed to be the coach? And then it, in 2017, he decides that he's going to go to Washington instead of sticking out for one more season and he's going to be the Syracuse coach. And the question is why? And no one really got a real, a real answer. Beheim said, and he said it numerous times now, he just want, Mike Hopkins told him he wanted to do his own thing. He wanted to build his own legacy and be on the West Coast. And that that's fine. And that that's that's what Beheim says. You know, Mike Hopkins never really said why. It just, if that's the case, that's the case. I, I believe Jim Beham in that, that aspect because, you know, he's so adamant about, about what happened. But why fans are bringing that stuff up is just because it's been a long road of 10 years of, you know, every other year, Syracuse makes a little bit of a run, you know, in the NCAA tournament, but they're a bubble team during the season. And fans, not all fans can go to the NCAA tournament games where Syracuse makes a run. You know, they can go to the games of the Dome, but even that's expensive. And people have more choices as far as content and things to do these days than they ever have in life. So when I was growing up, you, you couldn't even watch every single game on TV. I don't know, I'm dating myself. You listen to a lot of games on the radio or you went to the game. And now, you know, I've been to a few games, you know, and I have to, I have to travel to go to games and it, it costs 
cost me, you know, it could cost me up to a thousand dollars with room and board and staying overnight and and buying stuff and concessions. And I think this is where Syracuse can kind of win fans back is that you know make some ticket availability that are, are are cheaper you know let people that are sitting in the third level move down to the first level when the game's not crowded um the backcourt there with the 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 football stadium stuff you know instead of having like corporate overall corporate like national corporate brands back there have local guys come back there let them showcase their business you know I know there's contracts with food and concessions. I get that, but you can still make it happen. You're the athletic department. You're you're in charge. You can make things happen where you could have local businesses in there, or you know, make a deal with them. Hey, if if Syracuse wins this game and you show your ticket at Varsity or you show a ticket at Fagans or you show a ticket at some place in East Syracuse or or you know any of the other places, you get a discount. It's going to bring more people into bis- into the games because people like free stuff. It's it's obvious. It's been shown. You know, give them a popcorn and a hot dog with one of these more expensive games. You know, you really want to go there, free beer. Probably not because it's probably a lot of legal stuff. But why not? Why not try these things and bring things back? And for Autry, you know, the the key to kind of, I'd say, winning fans back or restoring faith is, you know, two things. One, you got to win. And this year was a step in the right direction. You know, 20 wins. He had some good wins. He had some wins over tournament teams. You know, I, I think they're unfairly judged. They Definitely were just as good or better than some of the teams that made the NCAA tournament. They beat NC State twice, but uh, NC State wasn't a tournament team. They won the, <laughs> the ACC tournament, but still, I'm saying they they beaten some tournament teams. They beat Oregon. They beat North Carolina. Um, you know, they they had some good wins. They had some bad losses too. Um, but you know, they're right there. I think the disappointing part about the transfer portal is some of those guys are leaving. That's also where you're going to earn your money as a coach. Now you're going to have to really hit the portal and be good in the portal and good in recruiting. You know they got the the guys coming in, the freshmen coming in, but they also need to to figure out guys in the transfer portal. And to me, an easy solution there is you you hire a transfer portal person, which means either they're they're constantly in the transfer portal or they're always scouring the the stories and talking to people about who might be unhappy in their environment or who would fit better in their environment or who's leaving. And that's their whole job. It's not anything else, it's not coaching on the floor. It's not doing anything else besides just the transfer portal. And, you know, why not? I mean, it's, it's equally important. You see the final four teams, they're, they're, they got plenty of transfers and you see teams all over the tournament, they got transfers and they're impactful. And it's just the way the, the world is now, you know, guys leave, guys want to go to a different program. You can't be attached to players as it is, as maybe we were, we were before. That's kind of my whole take on the thing. I think Syracuse fans are a little annoyed because, you know, we had it really good for years, you know, for years on. You know, making a tournament wasn't a question. It always happened. And then in the last 10 years, it's, it, there's been there's been bubble teams. Still did better than a lot of programs. But when you set the standard as, you know, being in the NCAA tournament, being the top of the league for years, and then you're not, it – sours people and older fans know when Syracuse was great and been there and younger fans haven't witnessed it maybe as much you know think about it when they won the championship it was over 20 years ago it was 20 year reunion last year so what fans that are in their 20s really know about Syracuse winning the title they don't so what are you going to do to bring fans back is a question that you have to ask yourself and let's stop bringing up old stuff I mean Mike Hopkins that's old news man it's it's just would, would the program been been different if he had taken over? We have no idea what what would have happened. the The coach right now is Adrian Autry, and he did a pretty good job this last season. Now he has to figure out next year how to win and how to navigate the transfer portal. And if he does that, fans will come back. But if you sit there and do the same shit you always do, you won't get anybody to come back. You'll get people to leave, and we don't want that because I like Syracuse basketball and I want them to be good again. All right. That's a lot for the Dome Dot Podcast this week. Hopefully, I'm going to be doing this more on a frequent basis. I know I've kind of went different directions or doing more edits and more pieces like that. But I, I want to get back to doing the podcast on a weekly basis at least and, and kind of give my thoughts of what's going on. So that's all I got. Talk to you soon.